Before we begin, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to help the channel grow and keep up to date with our latest videos. Hi and welcome to another video by me, Flojo. Today we're looking at the Power Automate Flow Actions and we're looking at the Terminate Action. So what is the Terminate Action? Well the Terminate Action effectively allows the execution of a run to be terminated. So what does this mean? Well it means that you can stop a flow run using the Terminate Action with an outcome of failed, cancelled or succeeded. So effectively, you can stop a flow run at any point using this action. So why would you use this action then? Well, let's say we were pulling data from uh, multiple different uh, data sources and we were checking to see if there was a match. If there was a match, we can then terminate the flow as succeeded because the match exists. If the match didn't exist, we can then carry on with the flow and effectively create data entry at certain points. Okay, so what does this look like then? Well, this is what you're going to be presented when you first add the terminate action. You're gonna have a drop down where you can select your status. Now, if we selected failed as an example, then we would effectively be shown this. We'll have a status section of failed selected. We'll be able to put a code in now this is where you set an error code and if you've ever had errors on Power Automate runs before you'll see different types of error codes. On my website uh, flowjo.io there is a list of different error codes that you can use that are often used with HTTP errors but there are also some out of the box error codes that Flow uses. Now you can choose to use this or you can choose to ignore it, it's not mandatory. There is also a message that you can set. So if you decide to fail a flow at a particular stage for whatever reason, you can enter a message saying, this flow has failed due to X, whatever you've decided. So what happens if we then select a different one? What happens if we select succeeded? Well, if we select succeeded, then effectively you're going to have the status of succeeded and you can't enter any more information because the flow is going to succeed. It's going to pass as if the flow was supposed to terminate at that particular point. And again, you can have a different status, which is cancelled. So if you select cancelled, then you don't have to put any more information in. Your flow will show as cancelled. So let's take a look at this on Power Automate then. Okay, so I'm on Power Automate and I've got a flow created called Terminate and I have a trigger called a Manual Trigger of Flow just so that we can kick off our flow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a step and then I'm going to select Control so that I can select Terminate. Now with Terminate selected, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to start with Succeeded because I don't have to actually enter anything. And what we're going to do is we're just going to run this flow and what we're expecting is our flow to just be uh, a pass. It, it ran successfully because we've got our status of succeeded. So let's just kick off this run then. Okay, so our flow has run. You can see our flow ran successfully. The terminate action has uh, run. You can see the little tick there and the uh, status is succeeded. So if I hit back now um, and look at the 28 day run history here you can see that I've run my flow and the test succeeded so our status is succeeded so if I go back into this now and I change this to cancelled now again remember we're just running the flow and then cancelling it straight away at this point we're expecting our flow run to be cancelled so let's just run our flow again our flow has run successfully. Um, we've got the terminate action run successfully and the status is canceled. So if I go back again, you can see that the test is canceled. Now, if this wasn't a test running, it would just say succeed or canceled. Now, what happens then when we get into something more complicated? Let's say we want to fail an actual run of a flow. I can enter um, an error code here. Let's say, 
we have in our business an error code of um, 7001. And this error code means um, flow foul. Now, obviously, this is just for my made up business. Um, whatever you decided for your code can be put in there, or you can actually use the codes that Microsoft provides for Power Automate. Um, again, I can then enter a message. So this is a test to foul a flow. And then I can hit save. So now when I run my test and run the flow, you can see the flow, uh, the flow actually run, but it failed. But you can see that the actions have run successfully. So the manual flow triggered and then we got a terminate of failed with a code of 7001 flow failure um, and the message of this is a test and it's failed so if we go back you can see again that the status there is test is failed because we obviously had our failure now that is how you use each of them individually what would you use this for let's actually take a uh, a deeper look into um, actually failing an option then. So let's add a variable and we'll just call this uh, flowjo and we'll make it a string and we're going to enter a value of flowjo. Actually what we'll do is we'll rename that to name. So now we've got a, a, a variable initializing this name and it comes with a value of flowjo. Now let's add another action, a control. We'll add a condition. And what we'll do is we'll say, if the value that comes through is equal to flowjo, then we want to do something. So we will want to run an action. If it's not, um, then we want to um, do something else. But let's say, what we want to do is we're working with Dataverse and a third party uh, data service. We've pulled the name and then we're comparing our name to one that's in Dataverse. If it is there and it's true, we'll just terminate the flow. But rather than use the failure, we'll just say it succeeded. However, if it's not there, we may want to add items into Dataverse, but what we'll do instead is we'll say, okay, at this point in time, we want to fail the flow because we have no ability to um, enter that information. So just put error unknown user, failed at user check. So in this instance, we are, we've got a variable passing it through. If it is equal to Flojo, it's going to terminate with succeed. Or if it's um, if it's not equal to Flojo, it will fail. Now, let's think about this for a second. We'll go through these steps. We come into here and it succeeds. Do we need this? Well, no, we don't. Because what will happen is when we come into the yes step, it will run whatever actions are in here and then go on to the next one. Now, obviously there's nothing after, so the flow will succeed anyway. But if it um, fails, if Flojo is not equal to uh, uh, Flojo, and it comes into here, then we'll throw a failure, say an error unknown user, um, failed at user check. Okay, so why would you use succeed then? Well, let's just reverse the situation. Let's say, if Flojo is equal to Flojo, and we just wanted to do that check and then do nothing else, we could succeed here in the yes and end the flow. And if it's not, then we can do some actions and then move on to the next step and continue for our flow. We may want to add some uh, Dataverse inputs, we may want to manipulate some data, and then you can do that in the if no section as well as then continue after. So in this instance, what we'll do then is we'll keep both of these here. 
So if Flojo is equal to Flojo, we should expect a succeed. So let's just test this then. Okay. So it ran successfully. Our condition has been checked. It was yes, and it succeeded. Now, let's come into here, and we can see test succeeded. Okay. Well, if flow Joe is equal to flow Joe, and we've succeeded here, let's remove this then, and run it again to see what actually happens. Now, interestingly, what you may have noticed last time was the condition just stopped because we succeeded at the first action. But now the condition is being true and it's going into the if yes column and is basically stopped here. So there are differences and discrepancies by, by actually adding a terminate action in there and setting it to succeed. Because you can see that the expression here is checked and then we've gone into the yes column and um, there was nothing in there. So we moved on to the next step and the flow ran successfully. So if we go back here, you can see they both say it has succeed. However, if you come into here, you can look at the condition. It's got the little gray X there because the condition was run and the terminate action was set to succeed, but it doesn't mean anything because we stopped the flow. Okay, great. So now let's change Flojo to Jax. So we're expecting this to go into the if no column and throw a failure now. So then if I hit manual run and I run the flow, you can see that the flow run failed. We go into the condition. Again, we've got the issue of the no inputs and if I just close this little error window over here, you can see that the action was run and we've got the failed error. If I come out here, you can see the test has failed. But again, if we come into here and let's say we move this out of the um, if no section and we'll just add a compose in there to show that this worked. Let's write test. Um, and save that and run that again. And okay, so the condition is run, the expression was false, the compose was run, we got our little test, and then we terminated after it, and you can see that um, it has failed. Now, it has a big impact on how the conditions um, are viewed when you're looking at previous runs. So it's something to uh, keep in mind when you're doing this. Now, another great thing about Terminate, and I won't touch on it too much because I'm going to do another video about the scope action. But if we wrap something in a scope, let's say we wrap this condition in a scope, we could run the Terminate after um, the scope action if there is a failure, capture the failed information, and we could essentially, before we actually foul the, um, the flow, we could send a notification to someone via an email, then terminate the flow, and then the flow would uh, have fouled, and we can actually control how the flow fouls. So that is how you use Terminate on Power Automate to achieve failures, successes, and cancellations of flow runs. Thanks for watching another video by me, Flo Joe. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit that like button or select a video on your screen right now to continue learning more about the Power Platform.